This is Dr. Cabin of Eye Associates in South Texas. I'm going to show you a video of a patient who is stung in the eye by a bee and the stinger was retained in the cornea. This patient was stung over 300 times after he ran over a bee's nest and was unable to escape the insects. This is a video showing the cornea of the patient and I will zoom up with the microscope to show you the bee stinger. You can see it with the barb in the clear cornea at the front of the eye. And I've just irrigated the surface of the cornea with balanced salt solution. We will now zoom onto the cornea. You can see he has an intraocular lens implant. Uh, this happens to be a toric lens implant that corrects the patient's astigmatism. And you can see the bee stinger in through the cornea to a depth of approximately two-thirds of the anterior chamber. As we zoom up further, we can see the barb holding the stinger deep in the patient's cornea with the spike of the stinger actually entering the front part of the eye. It was impossible to remove this exteriorly from the outside of the eye, secondary to the deepness of the stinger. You'll see the microscope lights reflected on the cornea, and you can see that we are going to make two incisions into the front part of the eye using a super sharp blade. You'll see this entering from the left side of the screen to make an approximately 1.1 millimeter clear cornea incision and this blade will go in parallel to the iris and you'll see this in just a second. Our idea is to isolate the barb with viscoelastic, a special substance to keep space in the front of the eye so we do not damage the delicate structures of the eye like the corneal endothelium. So we've made our side port incision with a 1.1 millimeter blade, we're going to hold the cornea with our 0.12 forceps through the clear cornea incision, and we make a 2.4 millimeter incision with a clear cornea keratome. We're now zooming out and going to inject viscoelastic in the front part of the eye after we put in some lidocaine local anesthetic. That is 1% non-preserved to not damage the cornea. So we inject in the viscoelastic. Some air bubbles came in with the viscoelastic, which is not a big problem. We just push them to the side with this thick, viscous material. You'll see the bee stinger has now been pushed away from the clear cornea using the endocoat. We're going to now use a pair of capsulorexis forceps to grab the bee stinger and we get it here on the second grab and pull it into the eye and then out through the wound. There's a small portion where the barb of the bee stinger is left in the cornea as it is impossible to remove through the inside of the eye without damaging the delicate corneal endothelium and we will leave this in situ as it's not causing much corneal inflammation. You can see here we've removed the bee stinger from the clear cornea wound through the inside of the eye. You can see it demonstrated here on a Wexel sponge and we will zoom up and see that we have taken the bee stinger from the inside of the eye and completely removed it in one piece using these fine capsulorexis forceps. And if we go to a higher magnification, you can see the intact bee stinger on the clear Wexel sponge. If we go back to the anterior surface of the eye, you can see that the cornea now has had the majority of the bee stinger removed and the corneal surface appears smooth. And as we irrigate the cornea, we will now remove the viscoelastic and seal the wounds with balanced salt solution.
here's the picture of my patient taken approximately one week later with the majority of the inflammation gone. Thank you for your attention. This is Dr. Kavanaugh of I Associates of South Texas.